What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back at you guys again with another step by step how to cartoon yourself tutorial. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Make sure you click post notification so you will be notified every time you boy drop some heat. And without further ado, let's jump right into this video. First thing you want to do, you want to go find you a picture with a lot of shadows in it that stands out um, and I already got my picture saved well, we'll just say it we're gonna do this we're gonna do this 21 Savage picture and as you can see a good thing to do if you ain't good at making like your shadows and stuff find pictures that got a nice shadow that you can follow along with you know what I'm saying because as you can see on this picture like that shadow is easy to follow along and then the more advanced you get you can go to pictures that where you got to really know how to just improvise yourself you know what I'm saying so we finna use this 21 21 savage picture what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the opacity and the size of my my art template I like to draw on is 18 by 18 inches. And that's a great size for like you know what I'm saying Instagram and stuff like that. Okay, what you want to do? You want to drop the opacity down on your picture. After you do that, you want to lock that layer, create you a new layer. Then I set my brush. I get a lot of questions asking what type of brushes I use. I just use one brush, and it's the brush that Adobe Illustrator give me after I set the uh, pen pressure sensitivity. And what I'm drawing on is a UG tablet. And got a little stylus pen to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm drawing right onto the to the stream. If you want to know everything I use, I will have the links under this video. Well, yeah, let me go ahead and set my pen pressure. And the only way you can get this option right here, if you have a digital tablet, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't get this option with just your mouse. So I, I go to my pressure and I set both of these bottom numbers to three and click OK. And then right after I do that, after you set your pen, after you get that little that little style of brush you see me using, and it's really I just I just start light, then I press hard in the center, and you'll just start making your own technique with making your lines look good. But it's just the pressure sensitivity. That's the only thing I do. Now, main thing you want to focus when you're doing these cartoon heads is make sure you're doing very clean line work. The better your line work is, the, the better your cartoon heads will turn out. So I'll just come in and just make sure I'm doing some very clean lines. Then a little fill in technique, you want to come to your pencil, pencil tool. Here go my settings for my pencil tool. Hit OK. Keep this layer locked and swap the black. Move the black to the top right here. And now what you want to do, you want to trace in the inside. And it'll fill it in for you. You feel me? Okay, we already did the nose. And then I just keep going back and forth with my pencil and my brush for fill ins. Just keep making our line work clean. We're gonna do these eyes. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Now we're gonna go back to our pencil tool. Uh oh, forgot how to move this 
color to the top to do the fill in and make sure the bottom layer is locked. time you spend on your line work I'm telling you don't worry about being too fast just worry about getting it right you know what I'm saying line work looking clean you feel me we taking our time and the good thing about Adobe Illustrator, man, you get to zoom in as close as you want to. So, if you're trying to get your joint real clean and nice, go ahead and zoom as close as you can so you can get like the fine, see the finer details. Make sure you're closing your lines off as well. So when it's time to do the color and everything. Easier. Everything I like to do on all my cartoon heads is the drip. You know what I'm saying? The 3D drip. Go back to your pencil and you can fill in the inside and then go do the finer details at the end with the brush. Top, and we're gonna do the fill in for all the dreads. And after we fill them in, we're gonna come back and add detail.
happy this this little piece right here hold out and move it up just keep pacing it around so it'll give us a, a full effect of the hairs we're going to draw, make our brush smaller, so they have like a fade effect. It ain't looking clean. What you gonna do is you gonna select everything, go to object, expand appearance, then you're gonna click merge on your pathfinder so all your lines can become one. Give it some time. Okay, now all our lines just became one big black line. So now, what you want to do, you want to drag your line work to this blank sheet of paper to make a copy, lock the top copy, and now we can delete our picture, photo, and delete that layer. Okay, go to the bottom layer, 
find you a good base color to start out with. A good, a good skin tone start. You want to go to your rectangle tool and you want to drag that color over your line work. Make sure it's at the top. Now you want to right click the color, go to arrange, and send to back. And now, if you look over here at your layers, you'll see your line work sitting on top of the color. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of it together and click merge on our pathfinder to make it one with the color. After you do that, you wanna right click it and then you wanna go to isolate select group and now we can make changes. I'm gonna delete this out of brown because it's isolated because we made sure our lines was closed off. Another thing we're gonna do, you see, you see colors is trapped in the hair. Now it'll take all day to try to just go through manually and get the color out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click the drop down menu on our layer that we just added color to. And we're gonna scroll down till we see our last black line. get to the last black line I was just at it right here we're gonna lock all the black lines so just hold the lock button and stroll up so to lock them all just keep strolling up while you hold them keep strolling just keep strolling strolling okay but leave these top two unlocked and now you can close it. So now we can go to this white arrow and select it and delete it. And it won't select our black because we just locked it. So we're just strolling through, deleting the color out of the hairs. all the colors out the hair come back to this arrow right here and click on to the color right click isolate selected group and now we finna put our base colors down hold shift to color more than one thing at a time Now that we got the base color down, what you can do is you can lock that layer, create a new layer in between, and we're going to start with our darkest shadow first. So sample the skin tone, and let's find a nice little blend between that. And 
and we can always tweak tweak colors so it don't matter if we find the perfect tone right right now so after you do that you want to come to your pencil tool make sure your colors at the top and this is why I said find a, a picture where the shadows really stand out so we can you know what I'm saying so it'll be easier for you until you create your own method of learning how to find the, the shadows so I'm just looking at the original picture and wherever I see the darker tones at that's why I'm placing my shadows and come back so it can fill in that area Now we got the first layer of our shadow with our dark shadow. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna select our shadow color. Then we're gonna go to edit color, go to color harmony, and we're gonna tweak it. create a new layer and put it under our dark shadow layer and we're gonna make this color a little lighter so this is our in-between color our in-between shadow so we're gonna sample the skin again and find a nice in-between color
back to the mixer. Better. Color edit, color harmony, so all. So. That's good. We're going to add us another layer. Just gonna put it under the lighter shadows because we about to go even lighter. Keep giving shaping it. Shadows really like make the shape of the of the image you're making. So now it's time to go in. how to really use your shadows it'll really make your artwork look so much better so don't think that don't think your shadows don't ain't important and you can just throw them anywhere if you really get them as close as you can it'll make a big difference with your artwork
I'm going to do another layer for our highlights. So you want to put it under. We just keep, every time we do it, we go from dark to light. And every time we do it, we're going to keep adding a layer under the next shadow. Just like this. And the reason I do that, I'm going to show you. I pick a lighter tone. So, when I'm drawing my shadows, it'll fall right behind the other ones. So, let's add our lighter tones. So to sit on top of it. So dark or darker so, so so that's why it's good to, to put your shadows on different layers so you can always go in and tweak Last but not least, we're going to put a layer at the very top. And then we're going to make sure you got out your gradient chart right here. Then we're going to select the gradient. And you see this black on this side? We're going to give it a, a tonish color. And we're going to do the same thing on this 
side. It don't have to be perfect, but make it blend into like a brownish, grayish color. Okay. Bring it closer. In the center, we're gonna go. Now, we're gonna go to our brush tool, and now we're gonna do our, our hair texture.
there you have it, you guys. How to make a dope cartoon head, man. Make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment. More heat coming soon. And I'm out this time.